Hello everyone, today I'm going to make a pneumatic cylinder bracket for my injection bomb machine. So for this project I chose a block of steel. This is due to the stresses that the part needs to take and also I thought it would be interesting to try a new material. Here you can see my new super fly cutter. Which leaves a really great finish. I'm also using my new parallels. So the aim of this is just to square the block up and make each side that nice shiny finish. See the reflection there. You can see there as well, there's some nice blue chips that were thrown off this tool. There's thrown chips in all different directions. <laughs> if you're uh, following my Instagram, you can see pictures of that and pictures of this, this build as I was doing it in real time. So here I'm squaring the block up because I need to machine the top surface. So I've got it pretty accurate there, pretty square. So for this top portion I'm just taking some light cuts, hopefully I've not rubbed the insert but I didn't want to uh, throw it out of alignment on the vise. And here we're going to do the other side so just need to re-square it because I've flipped the part upside down. Also apologise for any flickering there is in this video. The uh, lights in my workshop were playing with havoc with the camera. So there's the block all all squared up and nice and shiny. So now I'm going to remove the super fly cutter in the slot drill. That super fly cut is one of the one of the best tools I've, I've had for the mill because it just leaves a really great finish every time. If you're thinking of getting a Tormac system definitely get the super fly that's the, the one you want to get. So uh, just switch my tool over. I've got tool holders for every tool in my drawer that I've 3D printed. That file is available on Thingiverse. So now I need to remove a lot of material from each side. This is to uh, give clearance to my pivots and my uh, and my mounting locations to actually bolt this thing onto my ejection bomb machine. So I've, I've got quite a big big shelf to clear out. It's about 20 millimeters by 30 millimeters. So a lot of this footage has been sped up just to make the video a bit shorter. I like to try and keep the videos down to quite a short length but this one took a lot of time purely because it's steel and there is quite a few operations to it so for my next steel project I'm going to be using carbide cutters this one's a high speed steel cutter which isn't really ideal plus I'm, I'm not really using much coolant I've only got a uh, 
an old oil depositor where I really need some mist coolant or something that actually gets coolant right to the cutting surface. But that's uh, one of the future projects. Once I've seen my machine, they can make things like that a lot easier. This is just doing the other side. Okay, that's that's the basic block of the part. I've got a slot and some drilling to do as well. You can see that uh, external finish left by the Superfly is a lot shinier than the one left by the end mill. So uh, when I get some carbide end mills, I'm sure uh, I'll get a better finish. Or some, uh, some carbide slot drills. So now I'm just flattening both sides so they're exactly uh, the same the same depth. There's quite a lot of smoke coming off there from that oil. It's just a uh, regular oil that I'm using. Like I said, I, I need to make a better setup for this machine. Okay, so that's both sides the same, the same depth and the same width, and the walls all squared up. So now I'm uh, preparing to put a slot down the middle. This is what will actually hold the end of the pneumatic cylinder. And then the bolt will go through as the pivot. So I'm using my hand wheels to measure this out. Of course, there's some backlash in, in the machine having it um, as a manual machine, so I get it as centered as possible. Then I um, refine the last bits using some uh, vernier calipers and taking tiny amounts of cut off the sidewall. So for this channel I just took very small cuts, of course, because the end mill's cutting on all sides. That's why there's also a lot of chips being pushed out the front. Okay, so that's that's the slot in the middle. Now I'm going to drill the mounting holes. These will allow me to actually bolt it onto my injection mold machine plates. I'm going straight in here with the 8mm drill bit. This is a new drill bit. So I went quite slow when I'm coming down and pet drilled it. Ideally I probably should have centre drilled this but since it's a new drill bit and I went very slow to start it I'm sure it, it would have been fine with the rigidity of the tool. But I do need to invest in some good centre drills and some long ones as well. Okay, so now I've rotated the whole block. I'm drilling the holes to that pivot. Again, I just went very slow because I don't want the whole part to twist out the vise. So here's my tapping operation. This is my first time rigid tapping. I found that this, this was quite kind of hard to do on the machine. It takes a bit of trial and error to figure out what to do. That's because it's got to turn very slow and also quite a lot of torque. So I put my machine on the high torque belt. 
and you've got to figure out the right amount of pressure to put on it because I was using the quill. Ideally, I should have a um, a tapping tapping head. And I was only holding it in the collet, so there's a slight bit of slippage. I was worried that the tap was going to snap, so I left it to a kind of moderate tension on the uh, on the collet, so it could slip a little bit if it needed to, as opposed to snapping the tap in the workpiece. So I've just drilled the other side, and here's the bolt going in. And now I'm going to be clearancing them mountain mountain holes. I'm going to be counterboring them, so my uh, M10 bolts can drop in there. I'm using my pillar drill for this, just because the size of the job is drill, but I've got the, um, I think this is a 16 mil, but it's very long. I'm just opening out that centre hole from 8 mil to 10 mil, so the bolts can happily drop through. And here's a shot of me clearancing the um, them little sidewall supports. This is to allow the pneumatic cylinder to actually rotate. Otherwise, it would it would hit them corners. So I've milled the sides down. So here's the finished part, all cleaned up. And there's the cylinder, which should drop in like that. This is to activate the knuckle joint on my injection mold machine. So it'll be able to close the platens. So the cylinder is quite a critical installment. There's my bolts. Let's just drop in nicely. So this is a fairly simple part, but it made for a pretty interesting project due to new materials and a few operations that I've tried that I've never done before. But the next time you'll see this is in my injection mold machine video. Thanks for watching.